Let me show you how to create a table in uh, Affinity Publisher. So I have prepared here a page. It's a single page. And I have already opened the so-called um, table panel from the studio and the table formats panel. But the table formats panel is uh, not really uh, important unless you want to save your table as a template so to speak so we'll close that great so I'm first going to create my table and I have here uh, two three four five six seven eight nine uh, columns and I have 33 rows now I have um, some data that I copied from Apple Numbers and Affinity Publisher supports uh, Microsoft Excel the uh, pasting of Microsoft Excel data so I was wondering if it would also um, support Apple Numbers pasting so I have my my table somewhere here here it is, no here. So, and I've just positioned my um, cursor inside uh, column and row A1. And I'm curious to see if this is going to work. Um, it's not, because everything is now positioned in one cell. But everything changes when I select the whole table. And when I now press Command V for pasting, you see that everything lands up in its appropriate cells. And we can now start shrinking our table because we have too many rows here. So this is now what I need to have. Now my table is not exactly in the middle of the page, so I want to have that in the middle of the page. And as you can see, it now looks very different. And that is because this is more or less treated as an image now. And it becomes a table again when I double click inside one of the cells. So what I want to do now is change the font. Now I have here Avenir next. And I can, of course, I want to change this to Geomanist. And I can, of course, start scrolling down. But what I also can do is just start typing. And my Geomanist is here. So if I now click inside this uh, cell, then I'm going to see that uh, Avenir Next Bolt has been uh, converted to Geomanist Bolt. And Avenir Next um, regular, I think the name is, is translated to Geomanist book. So let's say that I'm happy with all that and that I just want to get rid of this column. Then I can click on this triangle here and say delete row. And let's now say that I want to get rid of the top uh, vertical uh, dividers for uh, the first row, which is uh, a sort of, uh, what do you call it, a sort of header. So then I can choose here inside horizontal and select nothing any, no, 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 I'm, I'm now deselecting uh, horizontal. That's not right. I need to deselect, where is it? The a vertical of course so and now I've removed the vertical and let's say that I want to repeat that with outdoors I can select this row as follows or I can do it like this and then we're going to do the same and I also want to give this row uh, a thicker line at the top so I'm going to 
increase the line width to two and a half and I want to do that here as well so only the top two and a half oops two and a half just to make my point um, and then I also want to make sure that not everything that I've uh, pasted in uh, in terms of data is really stuck to the um, to the top and to the left of each cell so I want to change the inset now everything here is locked so if I click on one of these arrows all the other insets left top right bottom are going to change as well so when I keep doing that my table becomes uh, very quickly it becomes very large and that's not what I want anyway so I'm going to decrease that again and after having clicked on uh, the um, the resizing up to one millimeter inset I'm going to deselect the linking and now I'm going to click on left so that it becomes two millimeters and top as well two millimeters and there is my um, no I'm, I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave it as uh, like this but uh, with the inset at left at two millimeter now I can link that again and if I now click then everything becomes the same again it's not that two millimeter uh, and one millimeter uh, remains in place and that you count up or count down with one millimeter at a time making two millimeters three millimeters and one millimeter two millimeter no everything becomes the same then identical so I'm going to switch that back and do it like this as I showed you before and now for example I also want to have my numbers um, at the right uh, justify not justified I want it uh, to the right so I'm going to keep down the command key and choose non adjacent cells here with the command key and I'm going to tell uh, publisher that it should write a line and everything is now right aligned and let's say that I'm happy now with my table but that I want to give it a background now I want two different backgrounds actually I want my table to have a fill and I want some of the cells to have a fill and so for the entire table I can just click on the fill in the frame category and I can give it a color or I can give it a gradient and so for example if I click here and I get that wheel down to here I can um, create a gradient from left to right to do that from top to bottom um, you just go to frame fill again and choose gradient and your color and now we have a fill that is from left to right and in order to make that from top to bottom or whatever direction you wish you click on the gradient tool the fill tool and you select a context and the context in this case is the fill not the stroke you could have a stroke as well but we are going to choose the fill and as you can see by default it selected everything namely the text so we don't need to have the text in a gradient fill but we do need the frame so we select fill the frame and now you get the um, gradient uh, control the on screen control and now you can drag that screen control any way you like and hold the shift key to um, force uh, the um, 
the movement, the uh, direction of um, this control. And now you have your top to bottom frame fill without affecting anything else. In fact, if I now select the fill and I click the reverse, you get a bottom to top fill and vice versa. And so this is the way you uh, create a fill for the frame. You can also create a fill for the text. For the text you can have something like this. Yes, so all the text will be in this case uh, red or you can have a gradient again and if you like to have a gradient uh, on text only you could do something like let's say like this so that you make that a bit darker because you can't see it very well so this is a possibility as well um, and that's what you can do with uh, fill in the table. So now I have my gradient and now I can also give my first column, my first column, a different fill. Like for example, let's say something like this, but a lot less uh, outspoken of course, something like that. Right, so that's what you can do. Now, I have my table, but I'm not very happy yet because it still is a dull table. So I can rotate my table and make it a rotated table, but that's not a lot of fun. I can skew it. That's already a bit more funny, but I can make it even better by going to the designer persona. And in designer persona, I'm going to open the isometric uh, functionality. I'm going to choose isometric and I'm going to leave create plane set on and I'm not going to show the grid. So now I'm going to close this and now I can fit to plane. And what I can do now is move that thing around and make it even smaller. But it will fit the plane. And what I can also do is if I go back in time I can, for example, over draw over my table and create something like this and then move it backward and then get it out underneath and give it an effect, a shadow here, so the radius like this, the offset like that, more pronounced, radius more pronounced, so like that, and select my graphic again, going back, so that it really sits right behind my table, then select the whole thing and fit it to the plane, and that shadow thing has not it has been fit to the plane as well but you can't see it because it's right here so we're going to do that differently uh, that's not going to work is it no it's not I'm going to exaggerate a bit so we're going to select that again and fit it to plane and now you can see that we have here our back rectangle and what we can now do with that back rectangle is draw it underneath and perhaps exagger exaggerate sorry, the effect a bit more so that you can see what I was after in terms of effect like so 
and now we can go back to publisher and in publisher my table is now in isometric and even if I now want to change anything in there I can just select it deselect it, delete it, add to it and everything will remain as it is and of course when I deselect the whole thing the table remains intact and you can even lock your two layers so that you cannot inadvertently change them anymore and that's uh, it for uh, this uh, presentation thanks for watching and i hope to see you again on uh, my channel soon cheers <laughs>